Mm-hmm. There we go. There we go. Let me see that TV. It's on one. All right, there we go. We good. We good. All right, let's see who we got, man. We got Low Key T, man. Shout out Low Key T. Did an interview on his channel last night. Shout out to him. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't done so. Check out the interview. Probably about an hour long. I love the conversation. Love talking to people who have very similar viewpoints and perspective on things. So UConn got the back-to-back script. The more I'm thinking about it, the way it's looking like, I got a feeling it might be that. Because I was thinking about the whole Alabama thing. They they haven't been to the Elite Eight since 2004. And that very same year, they played UConn <clears throat> excuse me. in Phoenix in the Elite Eight. That same year, UConn went on to beat Georgia Tech with Chris Bosh and Jared Jack to win a national championship. The women's UConn team also won that very same year. I think that was the, Diana Taurasi playing there, too, for that UConn team. Fast forward to this year. Alabama and UConn have another tournament match in Phoenix, but this time it's in the Final Four, 20 years later. It's Duke winning because of the national championship. Sac- the R.J. Barrett sacrifice. That's what they said about the Buffalo Bills, man. When um, What's his name? Dawson Knox lost his brother. Like, No, that was more so for R.J. Barrett, not for Duke. It's like Kinect is the real deal. Yeah, I wasn't sure where he was going. What he was going to be like if he made it to the league, which is it's clear he's going to be in the league. But yeah, don't, don't connect nice. You come on a 30 0 run. Yeah, that was the most obvious thing I've ever seen as far as a team throwing a game. Like it was tied 23 all, and now all of a sudden you just give up 30 points. 30 unanswered points. Just come out the second half and don't even do shit. There's even one, there was one play that made, it. Was, they was already down by like 20 at this point, but it was bad. Like on the inbound, Illinois basically just threw the ball to UConn. They was, like, they was under the basket at the baseline. Just, dude just clearly threw it to, threw it to, you, uh, threw it to a UConn player. Like there was not a single fighting Alana player in the vicinity. And then UConn turned that into a transition basket. Like most of their points was coming off of. It's good. I hate Lakers. What's good? Bronze flat power guy. Speaking of runs, Tennessee, they they had a nice comfortable lead, and then all of a sudden they gave up 15 points. They went on a 15 to 2 run. I know Charles had mentioned Tennessee lose the game. That might be something that plays a big role in it. Would I make a Marquette's pass to seasons rigged to just ask in the big games? Rigged, of course. It's like both underdogs won, was that Friday night? With the exception of the Tennessee Creighton game. Duke ended up winning against Houston, which I never trust Houston. Like, they do real good in the regular season, but I never trust Houston. And then NC State ended up winning against Marquette. I mean, they got the, two, they got the wrong two North Carolina teams advancing. I'm mad about that. Over here, they got UNC losing this white boy Alabama and shit. Said Baltimore might be winning the Super Bowl because of the French, but they not winning shit. As long as Lamar Jackson, the quarterback, he already got his they not winning shit. Maybe the baseball team, the Orioles, but the Ravens, yeah, they ain't winning shit. What's up, JJ? What's good with you, man? What's good? To everybody doing on a uh, Easter and stuff, probably chilling with their family. That UConn might actually repeat. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. Mm. We're going to win in tomorrow LSU with Iowa I got Iowa winning that game I would like to see LSU win So they can shut all this Caitlin Clark hype and shit down But you you can already see Who they really want to hype her up So I got Iowa winning that game And if you notice in those, in those NCAA women's games All of the big stars advanced to the Elite Eight like You got Iowa Everybody knew Iowa and LSU was going to play again South Carolina advanced, of course. Paige Buchers in UConn advanced. Juju Watkins in USC advanced. And old girl from Texas, they advanced too. I think because they're playing right now. Ooh, from three. Don Connect already back at it. I 
I know, bro. That was so bad. Like, I haven't seen anything that bad since watching, like, a middle school game where it was lopsided. Who, what? Who, yo, what? <laughs> like, what? Alabama, UConn, what about it? Yeah, this Tennessee all or Purdue game going to be... This going to go down to the wire. I can already tell the way they're going tit for tat to start off this second half. And the biggest thing might be if someone's going to lose, going to be some BS foul call. You want a UNC to go further? I want a UNC to win this whole damn thing. I don't fuck with none of those other North Carolina schools. I know this is a primetime game on Monday. I don't think they have any competition on TV. Where there's no valid team left. And what, men's or women's? Because in men's, most of the valid teams are still in there. Like Purdue, they've been good all year. Tennessee's been good all year. Uh, who else is in there? UConn, obviously, I think they've only had one loss since January. So they've left most of like the one seeds in there. Exactly. Every, everybody could see that. Like, Just look at the way the bracket was laid out. You can see Iowa and LSU just happened to be in the same bracket. Like, of course. You want to both your in, UNC and UConn to go to the natty. That the men's tournament's been trash. I like it more than women's. I they always they make this bullshit narrative talking about everybody more hyped for the women's tournament than the men's. That's bullshit. No, they not. This game tomorrow night, LSU and Iowa, they'll be hyped for that. But you compare the men's to the women's, the viewership is not even fucking close. I think the biggest thing is really the number of close games. You usually get those out of the way in the first round or the second round. Sweet 16 has his fair share of close games. But most of them haven't had like a memorable finish. That's what they need. They need like a game, someone to hit a game win, winning buzzer beater shot to give like that March Madness moment. That's what they're missing. I hope so. I hate Duke. I actually hate both of them, but I hate Duke more. What's good, Lorenzo? I'm picking ahead in this one. It looks like the, that game that played at the Music City Bowl a few years ago. Yeah, they've played a lot. They've already met in the Sweet 16 a couple years ago when they when Tennessee had Grant Williams and all them on that team. And Purdue had a, what's his name? Carson Edwards. Little light skinned dude with them dreads. And we of course we know about the Music City Bowl, which Tennessee got screwed late. So, yeah, these two teams are connected. Think about this, Clemson and Alabama. We know they play, what, three times in the national championship game? And they play in the Elite Eight now? So, you always like the men's tournament. You can't get into women's. Yeah, I tried. I tried watching that game last week of West Virginia and Iowa. I was like, yeah, I don't. They talking about I can't wait to see the women's game. Nah. I do like the fact they, they have a higher chance of fighting. That's the only thing I can get into. And they be throwing hands and pulling hair. Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese. The predominantly black LSU team versus the predominantly white Iowa team. You see what they did there. Same. Same. I can't stay in Alabama. So Vols and OT get the media hype going for the Final Four. Shit, I hope they do. I hope they win. I don't, I don't care if it's overtime or regulation. I hope they do. What's good, Left Diggy? But yeah, like you said, this one definitely going down to the wire. They got Jonas Adu got three fouls in Meshack. You got somebody who who's a good rim protector who can block shots. Meshack was a good perimeter defender. Both in foul trouble. That's something to pay attention to. Especially if they get a four foul call, either of them, before the 10-minute mark. 
Actually, no, scratch. I'd say really before like the eight minute mark. Then that's going to hurt Tennessee. Yeah. We'll see, man. Tennessee always pulls some bullshit when they shouldn't. And big games in there. That was a magnet. That's another thing about this game earlier on is they had a lid on the basket before Purdue went on their run. There were so many shots I saw with either taking bad threes, awkward clanks, and then the ones off the glass where you can tell it should bounce off the front of the rim and go in, but instead it'll do that shit where like hit a part of it and just roll off the side. Like, nigga, you know damn well they pushed that shit out. So most men you talk to said they're looking forward to enjoying the women's tournament more and the viewership for the women's been been up more this year i mean it's been up but when you compare the numbers it's still not close it's men's over women's that's that's a narrative espn been pushing like that's not fucking true there's a reason why the final four is played at a football stadium in men's and just an nba arena for women's women's ain't gonna sell out like that and another thing is they got home games in the women's tournament for the first what two rounds so of course you're gonna have sellout crowds if say iowa has a home game and all this hype around Caitlin Clark, of course they're going to sell out. Because some of these games that they sold out, women's put them at neutral sites, you wouldn't have had a sellout crowd. I don't think they're going to get one though with him. With Rick Barnes, I don't think they get it. It'd be cool if they did, but I just don't see it. Cause Rick Barnes, yeah, I don't think, yeah, he's never got one. As good of a coach as Rick Barnes is, he's never won a national championship. I know what you're talking about, and I remember that game too. <laughs> There's still that one play in that game where, what was that dude? I forgot his name. The tight end for Purdue. They had to play with the Tennessee defenders. It was two of them had him tackled. But then they straight up just let him go and stared at him and let him run another, what, 40 yards for a touchdown. And the last dude ended up pulling him, pulling the Purdue tight end into the end zone. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's probably one of the most blatant plays I've ever seen in football. Releasing college football. We'll see what they do tonight in this game and the next one. So I know somebody already said Duke going to win the next game. I wouldn't be surprised if they had NC State win the next game. They promote all, what's the name? DJ Burns, that big dude. So they threw him in the end zone. Hell yeah. They do that a lot in football if you really pay attention. Like, if there's one of those defenders that happens to get there in the last seconds to make a tackle, even though you can clearly tell it's too late, they, they'll they pull him into the end zone. Like, you know, damn, well, you should pull him everywhere but forward if you if he's running towards the end zone. It's like they pushing UConn to the script. And one time, going to script, have a close game with them. I think Alabama, UConn are going to be close. That too. Ankle tackle on purpose. Yeah I, saw, yeah, I saw that, man. That's some bullshit. Like, think about this. They gave this NIL deal for nail polish to a guy first. Out of all the women that play in, C, in the NCAA that they could have gave an NIL deal to. Out of shit, any of the women in the WNBA, you could have gave that deal to them. But the first person you give it to is a dude. Think about that's the most blatant way of pushing the agenda I've ever heard. And then you got people who were like defending, talking about, oh, he's securing his masculinity. Like, nigga, there's nothing masculine about painting your nails and playing basketball. And then this nigga had the nerve to go live while painting his nails. It's funny it's a Duke player, though. Glad any UNC player. 
that NC State winning. Trying to make NC State look like that 83 team that won the Natty. That Jimmy V is a coach. For the last team to repeat. Yeah, Joe Kim Noah. What they call them? The 04s. Al Horford, Joe Kim Noah, Torian Green, Corey Brewer. Oh, I forgot. Who else was on that team? Got the white dude name on the team. That a white dude who could shoot. I want to say his last name was Humphreys. Exactly. And that's how it always is. They always going to be the ones to defend them. Ziggler with the open three. He should have made that shit. Because that would have tied the game. Purdue up 44-41. Just for, go back and look at the first pictures that uh, Caleb Williams had when he was at Oklahoma. He was already wearing number 13. This man already had painted nails. Even back then. Kurt Erstree, I think even after his first game, he was like, this guy's going to be a star at the next level. Already telling people he's gonna be a big name, big name player. Well, then you look at that video of him at that that NBA game. This man over here with the with the nail polish, the pink phone, and all. It's like he ain't even trying to hide it. And then RJ three got the nerve to talk about uh, people. In, if he goes to Chicago, people in Chicago should get the same products that he does, and all this. Shit. I'm like RJ three, shut your little coon ass up. Talk about people should get that next. Man, stop. And this who RG3 said people should should copy. Lee Humphrey. Thank you. Lee Humphrey. I don't even remember Mo Space being on that team. I know he went to Florida, but I don't remember him being on that team with the 04s. What the hell? <laughs> that was a terrible possession right there. Z- Zakai with the fadeaway three in the corner. Not even close. Tor- Torian Green was my favorite player on that team, though. That 0-4's team. Of course, Al Horford had the best NBA career. Would have thought it went Joe Kim Noah. You know, Corey Brew, he had a good career. Spades won rings with the Warriors. Lee Humphrey, I don't think he made it to the league. Both teams got six turnovers, too. Tennessee only made two shots of their six attempts, while Purdue's made four. And they have a five-point lead. What's good, Moki? Certified bucket getter. What's cracking with you? He was a freshman on that second national championship team. Okay. Oh, they pushing shit out for Purdue, too. Edie had that put back. Oh, yeah, they got a lid on the basket. But they made sure to push back. Like, Edie had the easiest put back from, like, two feet away. He was supposed to make that easily. This 85th edition of the tourney. UConn's get, get made out to be like Georgetown back in 85. Villanova pulled off what deemed as the greatest upset in tournament history. Well, I think it's better college basketball going overseas to Europe. You think Europe has better training development? Yeah, because in Europe, you're going to play against professionals. You're playing against grown men versus in college. Now, if you got an NIL deal, that might change things a little bit. The only difference is the level of competition you'd be going against. So Edie been missing layups the whole postseason. Yeah, some of these you can just tell they pushing out. It's like especially when there's a little slow roll off the side and shit. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't want him to score that one. That's why they gotta send this man to the free throw line to get points. And to stop the clock. Yeah, they didn't change the game to suit the overseas players, the European style of basketball. I mean, shit, think about Luka. That man been playing against grown men since he was like 15 years old and he come over to to the NBA. It's like, I've been playing grown-ass men and shit, so this ain't nothing new. 
So it's better preparation versus playing a bunch of college players where a vast majority of them aren't going to go pro. Oh, good fake. Couldn't hit the shot, but good jump, good pump fake. Do we know that they have more national champion championships than Kentucky this century? Yeah, because Kentucky only won the one with Anthony Davis them in this this century. See if Ganey can hit the three. Yes, they needed that shot. Hell yeah, he's going overseas with it. Moot going to get that European bag. Good defense by Tennessee. And Purdue just let Zakai Ziggler score. I get you out two players, but you should have you should have tried to stop Ziggler. He's 5'7. Instead of trying to stop. I forgot who was that. Josiah Jordan James. The Illinois Yukon game was disgusting. <laughs> and it's crazy because it started off so close. Like, okay, this is gonna be a competitive game. Second half, they was like, nah, watch this. Watch this. You think this is going to be close? Watch this team not even try to score. Good fake. They still pushing shit out. <laughs> they want to keep this a three-point game to the end. I can already tell. Purdue been killing them on the boards. 34 to Tennessee's 19. They should have a much bigger lead. The Illinois almost went an hour without scoring. That's my thing. They emphasized 23 as well, too. I think at one point it was a 23 nothing run. So you hate today's NBA? You want real American basketball back? Yeah, we ain't going to get that anytime soon. I think we might see changes. If there's an even bigger decline in viewership for the NBA, we might see more of a more of a change to try to bring defense back, but I doubt it. You kind of going back to back like KC. The only thing you'll be mad about is March Madness. Yeah, that's the thing too. Like I don't know what your scholarship situation looking like if you got like nil deals and shit lined up or anything like that but if, if not yeah that european the european route would be the best way to go don't let me find out you got a whole nil deal and you're like nah i'm gonna pass on that shit <laughs> so that's why they making uconn look more dominant the funny thing is if they played outright obviously they wouldn't have won by 30 20 however many fucking points they won by but UConn still would be winning. That's not a bad team. Think UConn men and women will win it. I'm trying to see would the bracket lead to Caitlin Clark versus Paige Bukers, or would that be? I think no. I think that'd be beforehand. Let me see. Yeah, so the winner of Iowa LSU would play U, the winner of the LSU or USC UConn game. South Carolina already won by 12. NC State is whooping Texas ass. Damn. South Carolina should probably win that game. And then whoever wins between Iowa and UConn will play South Carolina, I would assume. UConn women team only have like seven players playing. Damn. UConn looking like Georgetown did in 85. But it got upset in the natty. A college football tournament of 64. Oh, hell no. That shit. You can't make it go as quick either. Because in football, you can't do this shit where you play a game then have a day off and play another game of football. There'd be so many injuries. That t It would take a while for that tournament because it'd have to be an every week thing. So you would have, let's see. I would assume you would have first round, second round, Sweet 16, Elite 8, Final Four. A little over a month's worth would be how long that tournament would be if they did that. 
And then travel accommodations is another thing because football team's way bigger than a basketball team. You're talking about like 50, 60 something players, actually more that would travel. And then you got to think about hotels and all. Yeah, that, that shit would be a nightmare. Ah, uh, will you call in the final four? Get the two, get the two white girls against each other. Even though I'd like to see Juju Watkins against Caitlin Clark. That they won't let freshmen go too far. We'll see. I didn't even know she was already in a commercial with uh, Embiid. Juju Watkins. I was like, damn, that was fast. I don't think I've seen Paige in any commercials. I've seen Caitlin, Angel, Flage, and Juju in commercials. Yeah, they hinder you too because you got to play within a system. But it works well for some people who are going to be system players. But it doesn't work well for a lot of other people. That's why even the best players in college, it's like there's the ones you've seen that you know they can really ball out and do better than whatever they points per game is. Say like in college, you averaging like 15 points a game. This nigga get to the league, all of a sudden he averaging 20, I ain't gonna say 25, but like 20 as say a rookie if he's really, really good. Can that keep getting to that elbow? Oh, they push that shit out too. That's dang fishbowl now. They pushing shit out left and right. College football should go to 16 like the old NFL. I think 12. I think 12 is enough. 16 is too many. Tennessee trying to press now. So they have another fight. <laughs> I think this one though they want they want Caitlin Clark to go farther this time since she's you know the she's going to be the next face of the WNBA. They need her to go as far as possible. But Juju inefficient. She just a freshman though. I forgot there was an old girl from Iowa State. Crooks, that real big girl. I remember she dropped 40 in the tournament. Dalton from deep. Mm, clanking. Yeah, because she got injured. What's good, Marco Polo? Yeah, man, YouTube shadow banning a nigga for real. Because, like, I had to log into my backup channel just to get a notification the other day. I was like, okay, something ain't right, man. I've been live for this long and getting no noti. Ooh, I was hoping he would dunk that shit. He went with the soft finish, but damn, Dawn, you got to yam that bitch. But, yeah, they trying to shadow ban niggas, man. Caitlin Clark gets revenge for last year, of course. She the great white hope. They can't have her losing to Angel Reese twice. Because remember, this is supposed to be like the Larry Bird Magic Johnson robbery. So if quote unquote Magic won the first one, you know, Larry got to win the second one. Or if they want to do it, Magic got the better of Larry in college, and then things kind of evened out a bit in the NBA. Mm, that's a foul. He gonna make it to the league, but yeah, he's. I was talking to us. I forgot who I was talking to. Uh, who was it, Dell? Yeah, I was talking to Dell yesterday about that. Ed seven four and Wimby. What? No, is Wimby seven six or seven four? Bottom line is, if he went against Wimby, Edie's getting his shit blocked easily. Cause like you mentioned, he's too slow. And then other, another big person like Bowl Bowl. When these niggas are athletic, much quicker. But he'll have a spot on the roster for sure. 
Mm, good pump. Good shot. Cut it within three. You know why they pushing Kalen Clark. You know what demographic they going after. The same shit the NFL did. That's what they trying to lock down that. That white female demographic. And then you get little girls looking up to Kalen Clark. And then they going to start playing basketball. Etc. Etc. He going to be in the NBA. Trust me. Because I know him and it, Edie are both in the running for a national player of the year. Good defense, Ganey. Nigga went up like a football player, and then there you go connect with the points. One point game. Dude, you nice. He'll do good overseas, not in the NBA. Yeah, he's slow. But I think he's still going to be a nigga on the team, though. And as long as he stay healthy, that's the biggest thing, too. We saw Taco Fall. He didn't last long in the NBA. Did the transformer demographic. They not, they not watching basketball, dog. Like, they can try to market it to them. They not watching basketball. Because honestly, most of the people that watch women's basketball is men. That's the crazy part. So they need to get the women involved. The NC State won the NCAA championship in 74. First time ever if they beat Duke. Be the 74th time to beat Duke. I hope they beat the shit out of Duke. Exactly. Yeah, they've been on some bullshit. There's even been bigger channels they've been shadow banning too in the like in the in the sports section specter as well. So yeah, YouTube on some bullshit. That startup screen for college football twenty five gonna cause you to act up. <laughs> yeah, he is skilled. Eddie don't have the same skill set the Joker got though. That's the problem. And he can't shoot like Joker to bail his ass out for his lack of speed. So if Iowa beats LSU tomorrow, white American could be happy because Caitlin Clark beats Angel Reese. Who they've been painting as the villain all year. And they've been painting Caitlin Clark as the face. Even though they do the same shit, they both taunt. Both talk shit. But one of them is viewed as, oh, she's such an inspiration to young, young girls everywhere who want to play basketball. And the other's like, fuck is wrong with her what's she doing what's her problem but yeah this one this one like i said they trying to keep it in three they gonna hover around that shit all day i don't even remember what the spread was for this game I know obviously it didn't change by now, you know, factor in live betting. I know what I want to see NC State do. Let's see what they got. Two and a half, go figure. But do a two half two and a half point favorite. And now they got actually they got it one now. So yeah, any made basketball Purdue, boom, three. Connect got 28, Edie got 27. Rest of the team for Tennessee, 25. Rest of the team for Purdue, 27. So, yeah, the stars are showing out for the two teams. Yeah, same with Luka. It's funny, Giannis is, is European as well, but then he don't have nearly as much skill. It's just all athleticism is what he's relying on. He should have shot that three. Yeah, they fucked. Yeah, Purdue had good ball movement on his possession, and they fucked it up by hesitating. I see what they're doing. Well, Eddie did this shit where he just throws it at the basket, at the backboard. I was a one and a half point favorite against LSU. 
and watch it be a one point difference when, uh, on the final score. Two people in your face, you know you shouldn't have shot that Ganey. And your cornrows ain't got no hang time either. So what makes football more exciting than basketball? Think about football is it's a lot bigger depending on where you're at. A in America is just bigger. And the crowds are louder. It's because we watch it. I don't know. I guess the easiest way to put it. There is more, I guess, emotional investment put into it as a whole. That's why. And then with basketball, if it's NBA, the season too long. Versus the NFL, it looks more valuable because they only play 18 regular season games. NBA, you're playing 82. College basketball, you're playing, what, 30? And then maybe 31, 32, depending on how far you go in the conference tournament. Maybe 40 if you make it to the NCAA tournament. But really just supply and demand. Less games makes it appear more special. There's no difference in UFC. They, they not fighting... A fighter is not fighting, say, every single week. Like Mayweather, we might have to wait six months, a year to watch his next fight. So it seems more valuable because the amount of time we waiting. That they're going to fall off after it's like Virginia. I hope I hope they fall off, period. Fuck Purdue. Duke a seven and a half point favorite. Mm. That's more popular because hey, it's, it's the number one sport in America, too. Like how baseball used to be America's pastime, now it's football. Because I'd say at this point, baseball is behind, shit, probably behind hockey. Just because we're in an era where people have a shorter attention span, baseball is a, such a slow-ass sport. And there's a lot of dead time in between pitches. Unlike hockey, is fast-paced. Until they have their stoppages that take too long, but it's... It's a lot of back and forth. It's very quick. You gotta you gotta pay attention to hockey to keep up with that uh, hockey puck, cause that should be going quick. Soccer, constant running clock. They even if it's slow paced sometimes, still constant motion going on. You realize on skill and fundamentals, while the NBA realizes on athleticism, cause remember they was hating on Luca when he coming to the league. They said he was not athletic. Look at him now. Compared to a lot of other people in the league, yeah, he makes up for the lack of athleticism, which he's strong, don't get me wrong, for his his skill set. And another thing was they was hyping him up way too early. Because it was like he couldn't, he wasn't even in the playoffs yet or getting past the first round. They was comparing him to Larry Bird. It's like, slow down, man. Like, he ain't really done shit yet. Like, we know he's going to be good, but don't throw it all on him right now. Like, they weren't doing that with Jokic until he started playing more and more it wasn't like year one oh my god Jokic he gonna be the next Dirk Nowitzki or some shit is that rating for Wrestlemania I forgot is it this week or next week cause I know it's in April so you can't get into baseball the only time I really watch is if it's a Dodgers game. It's hard to just watch two teams that I don't really fuck with in baseball. Like, at that point, it's really just background noise if I'm watching it. I said the new ML MLB uniforms are trash. Well, they do new. I know they got the City Connect shit, but what they do new. Because what I've seen, it's the same shit they've been wearing. Three-point game, seven minutes, 30 seconds left. I don't think hockey born. I just think the time in between periods takes too long. I guess it's like damn near 30 minutes every time they have a period break. Damn, that sounds so weird. Corner three. What do you got? Connect, connecting from three. Tie ball game of 56. Seven minutes left. Connect, damn, they're going to drop 40 in this game. I can already tell. And shit, he going to have to. He already got 31. He going to have to. 12 or 23 field goals, 6 and 9 from 3. He going to have to drop 40 if they want to win.
They got damn near a wall around 80, so he can't get any close to the basket as they should. When he drops 40 and 20 against the Knicks. And that's the thing. Any any big name player when they play at the Garden always shows out. Whether it be Steph, LeBron, Kobe, Trey Young, any time anybody. Anybody for opposing team that's the star player usually shows out the garden. Wimby's tough. Yeah, I mean, he's also like, what, 7'5", seven, 7'6". Seven, like, dude doesn't have to jump to dunk. It's like when you're playing on them little itty-bitty rims and stuff, you, need, you hang up on the door. That's what it's like for someone like Wimby playing basketball. And he got the big hands, so he might as well be playing with that little ass, that ball, you just shooting it and shit. That's what it's like for this man. Mmm, hell of a oop. Okay. Random white dude wears 13 that I don't think I've ever seen. Yeah, I don't remember him. Fanatics. What? I thought, I don't know why I thought it was Nike. Because I know it used to be Majestic. I thought Nike made the MLB uniforms. Fanatics. That is super weird. Like knockoff, literally uniforms, no stitching. Damn, I swore Nike made them uniforms. Now, explain why ease and logos are always manipulated. Look at Climate Pledge Arena's logo. What? What are you talking about, Climate Pledge? Oh, that's thirty-three. That's why. The E and climb, the E and pledge. They do that, you know. That's like the shit they do with Disney, where they manipulate shit to make them look like, yeah, threes and shit. They gotta get that symbolism, symbolism in. I swear, Connect taking every shot because they fit. It's tied fifty eight right now. Oh, and he can't get it. Oh, they they scrambling now. They scrapping. In your opinion, overseas players got the advantage over American players. Yeah, in the league now for sure. And then Kawhi Leonard had mentioned that a lot of the players now they don't even have basic fundamentals down. Because the way the game's evolved, people just going down, chucking up threes. You can get away with traveling. You can get away with double dribbling. You can get away with carrying. So the basic fundamentals, like just dribbling shit is gone. Because players know they can get away with it. Is that Casey going to drive Isaiah Worthy? Or Xavier Worthy? Shit, boy. Tyreek Hill 2.0. If he can catch. Boy, connect from deep. Say soccer is a much more lengthy sport compared. Period of minutes is more like forever to finish. I know I played soccer before. When you playing, it don't feel like forever. Unless you're running a shit ton, then it feels like forever. But nah, that shit go by quick if you're playing. But yeah, if you watch it on TV, I know what you mean. That's once you got to be into it. I get to play up against grown play against grown ups at 16 and 18. And now, yeah, you got to wait till you're older or slightly older to start playing against grown men. Unless you got the privilege, keyword privilege, to play against, you know, NBA players when you're growing up as a kid. Because some people know other players, etc. Oh, it's a joint deal. Got you. That's dumb as hell. Just let Nike make them. So his career won't be long because of his height and his knees going to cause him issues. We'll see. Kobe Bryant explained, which he played against a lot of international talent. Kobe Bryant. Shaquille O'Neal played against international talent. Say so Wimby's going to win a lot. Yeah, they got a lot stocked into him, man. 
He ain't go number one overall for nothing. They ain't build his hype train for nothing. It's like with Zion Williamson. Same shit they did. They built up all this hype. So even when he was overweight, even when he was getting injured, I'm like, he's not a bust. It's not over until it's over, until they, they ship him off for little to nothing. Then it's like, okay, this nigga might be a bust. Same with Embiid. He was almost in that conversation for being a bust. But we was patient, and guess what? Trust the process. Now this nigga all-star and he in commercials and shit. Ben Simmons, yeah, that's a lost cause. He can like three or four. I say probably about like, I say two or three. He gonna have a whole lot of individual records though. I mean, shit, he's seven, five, seven, six. He might set the record for most blocks in a career. Even though you pl- you played high school football, you never watched a high school game. That kind of makes sense. I mean, they don't televise every football, every high school football game. That would make sense. Like the only time I watched him was the ones where it was my school playing, or if I was covering it for, for on some like media shit. But if it was on TV, I was probably not watching it. So Wimby not going to win a lot. He has to fit the script and the Spurs not going to win anything no more. Pop, I disagree. I don't know about as far as Pop being the coach, but he going to win because, you know, they always have like a transcendent big man. They had David Robinson who passed the torch to Tim Duncan. And now Wimby's gonna be the next one in that in that same role. So yeah, they gonna be they gonna be straight. I think with Pop, they gonna win enough to make it to the playoffs, and then whoever takes his spot is the one who's gonna end up winning. The Mandela effect NBA is trying to push for Wimbayama. That wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a Mandela effect. And they, yeah, of course they pushing for him. Niggas seven foot six, and they put all this hype and investment into him. They already got all this. They had all this media attention on him before he was getting drafted, and when he got drafted. Exactly, which one paying you more? Yeah, I ain't worried about that. Like Chad Holmgren, he came in skinny. What they say? Oh, he's going to get hurt. He did, did he get hurt? Yes. But when he came back, he put on some more muscle. And the year after that, he put on even more muscle. So, yeah, the, the whole weight thing, I ain't worried about that shit. Like, this is first year. You can't put on all the... You can't max on all the muscle in your first year. You got to give it time. Yeah, they got they got to. They five more rings... Wait, rings with Wimby I don't know about five but they gonna definitely win with them for sure they made sure he went to a to a team I almost said school to a team with somebody who's gonna be a good handler who got experience with big men and international players and they like pop so yeah they made sure he wasn't gonna go to no Detroit Pistons and have him just rot and waste away his career they're like listen we gonna make sure you go somewhere with a stable franchise knows what the fuck they doing and we just gonna keep you here it's gonna suck the first year y'all gonna be trash next year it's gonna get better and then when it's your turn listen y'all finna go stupid what's good deandre correct me if i'm wrong do you got a youtube channel as i saw i was i was on youtube earlier i saw somebody who had a, a channel i think a nigga named deandre it might be you I think it is you i know there's like animations and shit on there you get like a, a show like deandre episode one it said is wimby a, a monarch athlete yes yes he had spurs apparel when he was a kid and look what team he went to so a, a lot of older generations told you they don't think wilt scored 100 points too many theories on the wilt why is there no film of him scoring these 100 points is a real question. Where's the goddamn film? They have footage of old, older NFL games. But for some reason, they don't have his 100-point game. How is that? 
one of the biggest accomplishments in the NBA as far as a record goes, and they don't have any film on it. You serious? Nothing but this supposed little radio clip. And they said most of it was free throws. It's like you skinny, but you a guard. You still a guard. You a shooting guard. Detroit's gonna have a lottery pick until the end of time. Yeah, Detroit, man, it's like they they basketball team is trash, but they football team got good. I don't know about their uh, baseball team though. I think they was trash last year. It's a three point game now. They trying to they're trying to keep connect from getting to that elbow spot, but his footwork. What they call, probably call travel on my bet. Oh, one you? That's somebody named DeAndre though. I was like, maybe, maybe it's him. Yeah, exactly. No one seen the footage, and the supposed footage that they had showed was like some some shit that wasn't even accurate. Like the jersey wasn't even the right jersey that he took the picture with the hundred points. I don't think they'll make it back there to the conference championship. I think they'll make it to the playoffs, but after the divisional, that's as far as they'll go. One point game, 341 left. Purdue scored, or 80 scored the last 12 points for him. Going down to the wire. Mm. Hell yeah. He went to uh, high school in Hamilton Heights, which is in Chattanooga. And that school is known for getting players like that. I think they've gotten at least three, four NCAA players that I can think of. Oh, that's something else. That I can think of because they usually they get them niggas when they grown too. It's a high school, but somehow them dudes. So I remember playing them in high school. They had a dude who was at least twenty some years old from Brazil, like built like grown ass man. But since it's a Christian school, they'll probably never get busted for it. Damn Purdue with a deep three. That's a big one too. Very questionable, but that's a big one. Six point game with two thirty left. Yeah, I saw that shit. Thing about that is people fail to realize that's what happens when you play in zone defense. Or any defense period is getting played. That's what people fail to realize. Versus nowadays, they showing a bunch of highlights of niggas shooting threes. With very little defensive resistance. So, of course, it's going to look like they better when they're really not. That's just one of those narratives to defend LeBron James, to be honest. Started from some YouTuber, but then they applied it to benefit LeBron James. Like, Jordan didn't have a left. Nigga, that's cap. LeBron don't have a right. So they want Purdue versus UConn. Shit, I hope not. Fuck Purdue. And as long as it ain't like that, that Nash championship they had with Virginia a couple years ago. I'll be cool. And as long as Alabama don't win, that's another one. Mm. Honestly, Tennessee got with a foul right there. Dude definitely got fouled on the three. And now he's flopping. What the fuck was that? <laughs> this nigga tried flopping, did not get the call. Mm. Of course, send an 80 to the line. Minute 46 left. The president Mung wants 80 to win. Who? <laughs> Fuck no. I don't watch it now. <laughs> Barely watch women's basketball. Women's college basketball, but no. Two different products, too. W There's a lot wrong with the WNBA. But yeah, I, I ain't watching no WNBA shit. I know Edie, he half white, half Chinese. They showing his mom right now. 
And then the dad, he was kind of off in the cut somewhere. He looked like an old white dude. I don't know if they sitting together or if he, yeah. Yeah, he is not next to the wife at all. They, they separate. That's crazy. Shit, they going to need more than that, man. Help this man stock. Which I know he going to go high, but still. He might get turned to a George Nyang or some shit. Dominant in college, but you know, NBA, you on you gonna be on that roster. See what Tennessee do. They got a minute 30. They down eight. And they trying to make sure uh Don Connect does not get another shot or even touch the ball. Six point game, minute 30, minute 28. That man's a Kai Ziggler. So, yeah, this last minute 30, they're going to be fouling like a motherfucker for sure. I don't remember how many fouls Tennessee has to give or Purdue. I'm going to look that up right now. Let's see. That's football. <laughs> Them niggas got 22. Tennessee got 10 more fouls than Purdue does. <laughs> Pray to God Alabama don't win. I don't think they will, man. I, I think you can't go handle business against, against Alabama. No, hell no. YouTube TV don't don't offer offer me enough to to want to to get their shit. Like a lot of the shit you can get on other other platforms. Like now this shit is I think Max because they've been covering most of the tournaments. Like the NBA on TNT games, you can get that shit through Max. The hockey that they got on TNT, you can get that shit through Max. I think so. I really hope so, too. I hate Duke. The Alabama ain't winning shit. Yeah, I think they're going to fall short, man. Just like they did 20 years ago against UConn in Phoenix. Suppose in Elite Eight, fast forward to now Final Four. Same thing. I don't remember if that UConn team ended up going back to back, though. Let me see. Nah, I don't think they did. But I do know the men's and the women's won that same year. It was UConn's second all-time all-time title in men's. 82 to 73 was the final score at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. And Emeka Okafor scored all 18 of his points in the second half as he led UConn to a 12-0 run down 75 to 67 with less than three minutes left. That is insane. Good finish by Connect. They still down five with a minute left. Yes, he trying not to foul. Purdue's already in the bonus. Connect got 35. Like I said, he gonna have to drop 40 if Tennessee hope to win. And now they already got 54, 53, 50 seconds left. Trying everything in their power to make sure Edie don't score. Oh, and they gonna foul before he shoots. Six seconds, 42.1 seconds left in the game. It's probably Purdue or UConn. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling, man. Get two of the good teams against each other. And they better make sure this game is close, too. I don't like Nash, I don't like any national championship that's a straight-up blowout. Misses the first. Five-point game. If Tennessee hits a three, they'll be right in the game. They have plenty of time to do what they need to do. Wait, that woman really had a shoot to her face. That's crazy. 
And he airballs the free throw. What the hell? <laughs> airballed the free throw, man. What's good, King Henry in the building? You know he airballed that shit on purpose. A walker fouled out. That's another dude who's good on defense. Tennessee got. Oh, damn. They almost had a backcourt. Don Connect got blocked by Edie. That's going to hurt him. That's that's the one that might have did it for him. 25 seconds. They finally got it over across half court. And now they got a foul. Yeah, that's the one that's called that's the one that cost them right there. They needed that. <laughs> Shaq couldn't shoot free throws anyway, so it didn't even matter. But Edie shouldn't have airballed it. If he if he trying to miss, I get it, but you could have shot that shit hard as hell if you needed to. Purdue at the line, 21.9 seconds. If he hit this, yeah, he had 86% free throw shooter too, lawyer. Yeah, six point game now. Seven point game. Yeah, Connect gonna have to pull up from deep. Got the easy points. Five point game. 66 71. 15 seconds left. Who was Purdue's coach? He kind of looked like Bob Huggins. I know that's not Huggins. I don't know who they coach is. Purdue basketball coach. Basketball coach. Matt Painter. That man, 53 years old. But he slick dude like Bob Huggins, though. This game close shit. The next game might be who knows? That game might be a blowout. Kind of like how they did yesterday. They made sure Clemson, Alabama was the close game and Yukon and Illinois was the blowout. Even though that should have been close, but you know. When you gotta do what you gotta do, somehow just forget to play basketball. Don't even try. The team need a 30 0 run, that's what you do. So many 71s. Yep, 7166. Damn, this Purdue fan already crying. Like, calm down, woman. To Duke UConn National Championship, they already spoiled that with the Hashim the Beat ad. What are you talking about? That's an old commercial. They did that shit last year. Like that Coke commercial. I think that's some shit they did last year. Oh, that movie already came out? Sure. I didn't know that. The Coke ad 99. Yeah, they just doing the free throws now. This game over with. What's good, Caleb? This man got 39 points. Holy shit. Six point game. As they pan to his mom and his dad. Misses the next one. Okay. Remember the spread is two and a half. Purdue two and a half point favorite. Mm -mm. That's it. That's game. They not going to foul. That's game. 72-66 Purdue. And like I said, every time Tennessee plays a Big Ten team in the tournament, they tend to lose to them. That's the second time they lost to Purdue since Rick Barnes took over. 
What's up, Soul Tim? What's up with you? And then that'll be the end for Dog Connect at UT as he, you know, he going to the league now. Zach Eady probably got one more game, two more games. Same shit with him. He going to be going to the league. But nah, fuck Purdue though. So we got Alabama, UConn, and Purdue. Last one who can get in, NC State or Duke. So, so far, two one seeds. I think it was Bama, a four seed. Shit, it might be. Now I think about it, let's see. You could potentially have two one seeds and two four seeds, actually. Did you want Tennessee to win the title? I don't think Tennessee ever won one in men's. I think all their success is going to come in women's. Say Duke wins. I really hope not. I fucking hate Duke. But who knows? We might see an upset. That one tips off, what, 5 10? Yeah. After 44 years, Purdue made the final four. Mm. Can't make this shit up. It's like whenever that run started for UConn, it was tied at 23. It's been a 23-0 run, which we know escalated to 30 quick as hell. Said you hope it's a lot. Yeah, me too, man. Fuck Duke. That North Carolina's Tar Heel Nation gonna rock with Duke. I feel like a lot of people that like Duke are people that aren't even in North Carolina. They grew up. I know Mark Sears been nice. I know his he's a senior now. Mark Sears always been good. They've been hyping up white dude, Nelson Grant. That's who they've been hyping up this tournament. The way they play, it's either they trying to set up the three ball or it's inside. That's all where all their points come from. It's like a mid-range jump shot don't exist for Alabama. So if that three ball is not hitting, they're going to lose to UConn. They're they going to find themselves down quickly. Because if UConn can get in transition the way they did against Illinois, shit. It's over with. So do I hate it? Man, you see this orange, of course. I hate Kentucky. I hate Duke. And Alabama. And I like the Kentucky every year. They do this shit where they get eliminated early in the tournament. Because, you know, they fans, man. Them Kentucky fans, when it comes to basketball, boy, that is... They got one of the... I say one of the most passionate fan base about their basketball team. And to see them lose every year the way that they do. And they fans get so enraged. I love that shit. I don't think any other college basketball fan base gets pissed off the way Kentucky does. It's like they sick of... It's like Calipari will get you the good players, but they sick of them now because the same shit happens every single year. And it's funny. It's like you can say fire this coach if you want to, but who you going to replace them with? Might as well flush what they got going on now down the drain. But yeah, man, I'm finna get on up out of here. Hope everyone enjoy their Easter. Enjoy the next game. Stay safe. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. And we are out.